From Twisted Metal and God of War to Calling All Cars, David Jaffe has made his mark on gaming. And in this edition of the bonus round, he gets a little personal. Does he have any regrets about his career? If I wanted to make Heartland, right. e even if Sony said, get out of here, take a hike, I'd find right. a way to make Heartland. What would he have changed about the PS3? Sony always surprised me because they're always a hell of a lot smarter than I think when I hear the first initial decision. And finally, if he could switch careers with anyone, who would it be? Obviously, there would be you. Um, I could never fit into the pants, but there would be you. Brace yourselves for impact. This is the bonus round. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the bonus round with David Jaffe, and he's in the hot seat this week. We're going to ask you some probing questions now about uh, your career and your life. Yep. All right, Dave, so what's the greatest regret that you have about your career so far? I, I don't have any regrets about my career. No regrets. No regrets. That's good. Can you think um, of any? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you the question. No, no about, I, about your career. My career? No, I, I honestly don't have any. Can you think of any that I should regret? <laughs> no, you should regret maybe you didn't make Heartland. People, people are excited no, about that. No, no, because the way I work is if I wanted to make Heartland, right. e even if Sony said, get out of here, take a hike, I'd find right. a way to make Heartland. That's just the way I work. You're a passionate so guy. I'm done. All right. So. What's the talent that you wish you had? Oh, um, like game-related? In, in life, I mean, play um, an instrument. You know what? I wish I wish I had the talent of being able to just shut off my mind more. I wish I was more relaxed. I would like that very much. Like I, I meet these people who are just like they're just calm and in the moment. You know, right. I'd like to be able to do that better than I do that. Right. Uh, if you designed the PlayStation Three, what one thing would you would you have changed about it? I, this will bite me in the ass in four years because it was probably a smart decision, but. I probably would have taken the Blu-ray out and right. sold it for less money. Why? Um, I think it could have been a more competitive system that way. I think more more gamers would have bought it, and ultimately, I'm not personally, not as a Sony employee, as a person, right. convinced that the average or even above average consumer is really that interested in sort of trading in their DVD collection for another format right now. Right. Maybe the next generation of PlayStation, it would have been the right time. Probably this, Sony always surprises me because they're always a hell of a lot smarter than I think when I hear the first initial decision. Um, so it'll probably work out great, and I hear Blu-ray's doing really well. But for me, if I was sitting at the helm at the time, I probably would have said, yeah. Wouldn't have taken the let, risk. Let, it's not an issue of risk. It right. just doesn't seem to be worth, I, I would have liked to have sold the box for cheaper and get more gamers uh, having it versus sort of pricing it at that level, which right. we only could have priced it at, which is a great price when you consider Blu-ray's in it. Yeah. But I would have just taken Blu-ray out. Uh, if you could change one thing about the game industry, what would it be? Um, I think the people who are responsible for the games, be them the key programmers or artists or designers, uh, I think, I don't, I've said this before, I don't think we're financially incentivized enough to really give what it takes to make these products all that special. I think I'd change that, but sort of what goes along with that is uh, I'd love the buying populace to be more critical in the decisions they make because ultimately people like myself and, and more talented people that do the same job that I do are not going to be sort of financially compensated in a way that we feel we should be until gamers in masses start not buying the crap licensed games and say, hey, there's a reason to spend more money and buy Shadow of the Colossus or, uh, you know, a type, not even an art title like that, but even buying more copies of Gears of War or Gran Turismo. I think the problem with that is, is I mean, it's not that we're poorly compensated. It's not like it's sweatshops. I mean, Sony, as I've said many times, has treated me very, very well. But when you look at sort of the contributions that we're making to popular culture, when you look at the contributions that we're making that can stand financially, in many cases, toe-to-toe -to -toe with the movies that are coming out and the money that they make, right. um, it does seem that quite a few of us maybe aren't being compensated the way we should be. Now, the problem with that is, is that you know, publishers don't get paid off of reviews. And there's a lot of games that are great, that are loved, but don't sell anywhere near as well a crappy C-level, you know, you know, version of a, of a, of a hit animated license. Right. Um, and so until that comes, until we can actually show as an industry that gamers will gravitate 90% towards just good stuff. It doesn't have to be artistic. It doesn't even have to be special. It just to be good. Um, the publishers are like, yeah, well, you know what, screw you. I can go out and license the latest CG movie, and I don't need your original IP. I'll, I'll go make that, you right. know, and, and make more money anyway. And so it's kind of this, you know, the reality is the market dictates, and right now the market is saying, 
you know, outside of people who probably watch shows like this, they're just as happy to go out and buy a, a, a C-level license as they are to buy a great game like Shadow of the Colossus right. or Gears of War or Gran Turismo. All right. What's your uh, greatest unfulfilled dream? I don't think I have one. I, I don't, which is not to say You're I've already... the dream? No, no yeah, exactly. I, I'm not to say it's like I've done everything I've ever wanted to, but I don't really have a checklist. I'm, I'm having a really good time going day to day and doing things that I like, and so, yeah, I guess I'm living it. There's no end game that you, you know, want to direct a movie or... You no, want to, you know. I, I used to want to direct movies. I have no interest in that anymore. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be really... Here's what I think. I think it'd be great to have a lot of money. Right. Um, well, there's the next one, all right? So if, well, no, 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 no. I'm going to finish that. Right. I think it'd be really great to have a lot of money so I could then go off. It's almost like it's almost like if I had enough money that I could take care of my kids, my family, myself. So if you I, won the lottery. If I won the lottery, what would you do? then I think I'd start making really interesting experimental games. Okay. I'd like to make games that really do try to see what this medium is capable of. But right now, there's no money in it, and I have to balance things. I, I have a family. I have myself to take care of. I, I'm not interested in sort of doing that right now. I want to try to crack the nut of can I make successful games and also make a really great living at it. Right. If I did that, then the next nut to crack, the next mountain to climb is, okay, that's all taken care of. Now let me just really see what I can just do with interactivity if I was totally not interested in anything other than sort of making a museum piece, basically. What is, what do you, do you have any thoughts about what that would be? I mean, is it something like um, a flow or? No, it... no, I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I think it has to do with how do you evoke more complicated emotions through pure play mechanics? Because a lot of people will go at it from the standpoint of evoking emotions through story and cutscenes and using all the ways that movies and, and literature and drama evoke emotions, which I think is incredibly incorrect. I think you need to evoke emotions in games through what games are, which is through interactivity. And so I think it would be something like that. So are all, the, all these guys, are they barking up the wrong tree where they're talking about, oh, we got to hire all these script writers, and we're going to have these you know, epic stories? And, you know. Well, I don't, I don't know if they're barking up the wrong tree by hiring writers. Right. I think hiring a writer and sitting down with a writer and a designer and saying, look, here are some emotions we want to evoke. Here's some story we want to tell. How do we do it through the interactivity? That, I think, is, is great. But I think they're barking up the wrong tree if they're spending most of their time, uh, you know, thinking that the way you're going to evoke those emotions is doing it the same way movies do. Because right. I think that's absolutely incorrect. All right, and finally, if you could swap careers with one person in the industry, who in would it be industry? and why? Uh, or one person in general? Well, there's very different, diff answers? different answers. Oh, let's yeah. do both then. Uh, in the industry, I mean, obviously there would be you. Um, I can never fit into the f***ing pants, but there would be you. <laughs> um, you know, why, though? What appeals to you about being a journalist? Anorexia will do for you. But anyway... Um, <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I, would, I wouldn't. You wouldn't dare um, be a journalist, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, I wouldn't be you. Um, who would you be? No. Okay, who would I be in the industry? I, you know, I don't know, man. That's a, looks like I told the insomniac guys, I'm in a pretty happy place right now. I don't think I'd want to swap places with anybody. That's a, but if. If I had to, if, if it was like, to. oh God, book three, and I had to That's like. That's right, if you were, if there was right, a, a um, <laughs> okay, fine. path yeah, and you had right. choice. Um, you're going to go rent that now. It's like, what does he mean? What does he mean by oh God, book three? Um, okay, I think it would be kind of fun to be, um, you know, it'd be great to be, no, I don't know, who the f*** would I want to be in the industry? Would you, I, would you want to be Ken Kutaragi? Would you want to no. be, uh, um, you know, Will Wright? Would no. you want to be... Uh, oh, I, I'd want to be so I could stay home and touch myself all day. <laughs> It's hot. Right. You like, like to see hot game developers <laughs> up there? Hey, <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, I'm just saying he asked. That's all I, I you know, I'm sure you're a very nice lady. Oh, Jaffe, it's going to uh, be legendary. No, that's what we always say. I got no answer for you. Um, I'm sure she's a real sweet girl. I'm sure right. her husband's going to beat the shit out of me. After she's, um, okay, but in life, if I had to choose, um, I think. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know, man. I think it'd be kind of fun for a day to be Steven Spielberg. To feel, right. What would that be like? You know, that would be kind of cool. Uh, it'd be great to be George Bush. So I right. could kill myself. Um, <laughs> see, I didn't say right. I was going to do it. Except, that's right. See what I'm saying? See how I did that? I yeah. said I'd be him, and then, anyway. Uh, I, I'm so happy being me right now. I'm, I'm, and that's not arrogant, Neo Gaffers. It's just... <laughs> I'm digging it. You know, David, I'm, I'm having a good time. The balls of a walrus, David Jones. I'm having a good time. Right. Excellent. All right, well, when we come back in the bonus round, we're going to meet two other game developers who are making small downloadable games alongside David Jaffe. 
Next time in the bonus round, the creators of Flow and RoboBlitz join me and David to discuss the rise of small downloadable games. Are these smaller games just stepping stones to bigger projects? What we really want to do is change the world, so to get into it we had to start, we had to start small. And do these games get the respect that they deserve? Maybe there are some people who are real hardcore and say, screw your small little games, I don't really care about them anyway. That's next Sunday, right here in the bonus round. Bonus round.